we're going to take a look at what is value. And really, when you think about it, value is what a customer perceives it to be. And one of the things that the customer is going to be taking a look at is the perceived benefits versus the cost. Is it worth the expense in time, in money, and in energy or effort? It's also important to talk about quality when we're talking about value, quality in relationship to value. And from a consumer point of view, there may be a focus on specification quality, in other words, how well it performs based on wants or needs, or how it compares to the competition. From a manufacturer or a production point of view, it might be the degree to which the product or service is produced or delivered correctly. Another important factor is price in relationship to value. Price is typically based on an exchange of something of value between a buyer and seller. It's the economic value of products or services. In other words, how much of something, money, service, or product, is exchanged for something else, money, service, or product. There also may be cultural nuances. What one cultural group might value, others might not. For example, people from Japan might prefer their pizza with tuna on it, whereas the most popular pizza in the U.S. is pepperoni. We also often refer to value add. And this is usually used in the connotation that there's extra features included in a product or service that exceed standard offerings at the same or slightly higher cost. This can often be a source of competitive advantage. Another way value is used in, is in terms of value chain, which is a set of activities for a firm operating in a specific industry. Products or services pass through each link in the chain and value is added in each link. A pictorial diagram, as initially established by Michael Porter of a value chain, would look something like this, where you've got at the very bottom a flow from inbound logistics, the transportation, trucking, shipping, etc., that brings inputs or goods to the operations. Then the operations where the value is added and where there's some processing, if you will, of the inputs into some kind of output. The outbound bound logistics which carries the finished goods typically to the market, the marketing and sales activity to help generate the demand and the opportunity in the market, and then the pre or post sale service. There are support activities such as the infrastructure of the firm, facilities, uh, technology, etc., um, human resources management, technology in terms of both production technology as well as communication or information technology, and then all of the procurement or purchasing behaviors that help uh, with the flow of goods uh, through the operational uh, segment. An example of this flow might be paper production, where you've got different steps or different sequences in the entire chain, uh, from the forest where the trees are grown, to lumber mills where they're cut, to paper mills where they're processed, to warehouses where they're stored, to a wholesaler who breaks them down into smaller bundles, and finally the retail store, such as a Staples or an Office Depot or Office Max, well, where the um, paper is then sold in reams. Other examples include fast food shops that are adding value by offering drive through windows or bundled meal deals, schools adding value by offering ebooks online through the library or assistance in filing for financial aid, accountants adding value by offering complete tax returns or small business advice, and supermarkets adding value by offering a wide range of fresh and prepackaged foods readily available. So what about marketing, logistics, IT, and finance? Well, there are also critical activities clearly in the value chain as well. Marketing helps to create the customers uh, or build an image or reinforce a brand and also can help to generate demand for the products through promotional activities, etc. Logistics, as referred to before, transports goods and services between value-added operations and ultimately the point of acquisition by the customer. And IT develops and maintains communication infrastructure that enables two-way flow of information between value chain participants, the processing of transactions, and the monitoring performance by management. Finance manages financial resources to ensure that cash is available to maintain and enhance value-added activities, and profits are secured to continue to enable firm to maintain competitive advantage and reward stakeholders. The final concept we're going to talk about in this video is value propositions. Value propositions identify and prioritize the set of vendor characteristics that are specifically intended to attract customers and or generate revenues. They're typically stated in value word equations where a customer's value proposition is the difference between your offering, 
what products and, and services you're you're actually offering and the next best alternatives is offering. And it's typically expressed in some kind of monetary terms. An example might be buying our products or services will result in a net cost reduction of 10% per year versus other solutions, which over the life of your installation will benefit you by over $125,000. This is the value proposition or the value word statement for the value proposition. Now what really locks us down is not you saying it, but actually having a testimonial from somebody who has actually realized this benefit or more. So you might add to this one or two testimonials such as, please speak with Hervé Ramirez at Semex as he has had similar applications has been using our products for three years. This way you're adding legitimacy by actually talking about specific customers who have benefited as a result of your solution. So we've just quickly reviewed value and you can see how value is added by a wide range of different functions within an organization. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully you have a better concept of the notion of value and value add. Thank you.